Hello and welcome to our May update here at Reesby Estates on the farm. So we are at the end of May and May is the end of, of the spring. Although as we stand here at the moment, you would think it's the beginning of our spring because it's fairly chilly, around 12 degrees, overcast skies, not really what we would hope for at the end of May. But May as a whole, we've had 20 mil of rain, so it has been a drier month, so that has helped us out. Um, getting on top of all the jobs which we've got a little bit behind given the poor weather we'd had recently. So what have we been up to in May? May really for us is a, is a month of just looking after the crops. Really the crops are growing rapidly. It's topping up the nutritions on them, putting on protection uh, fungicides to keep away the diseases, um, what they may be getting. But we're all on top of things. So Today what I thought I'd do is come back, if you remember in a previous episode where we had been drilling a vetch crop, just to have a look at it to see if it can grow um, and see what we can learn from it, to see how we can take it more commercial in the future. So I've come back to the field now where we've drilled it to take a look. So okay, we'll, we'll take a look. You can see it behind me here. Um, it's a little bit weeded up. We've got some thistles, but I'll explain why they're here in a minute. And um, yeah, well, let's just take a look at the vetch and I'll tell you how it's doing. So if we look, we get down lower, you can actually see the rows. So if I point, there's a row here, a row here, a row here and a row here. You can just make out the rows, but as we're coming closer, unfortunately, so here is the vetch growing here and then you can see more here but unfortunately we should have lots of leaf on now like this but instead what we're getting is these stalks like we have here and that's what we've got all over all over the field here's one that's grown a little bit better but again lots of stalk unfortunately the pigeons the wood pigeon is finding this a very tasty treat and we are struggling to keep them off them. Hence why we have one friend over here, a ghostly scarecrow, and behind us we've got another chap hanging about over here. But the pigeons have got used to these and won't come off. We could deploy gas bangers but we don't feel it's quite right to do here because behind that tree line is a lot of houses and I don't think it would be very popular with that banging all the time. So yeah, the vetch isn't working quite well at the moment, but it is a learning curve and we are learning quite a lot. Hence why I've left these thistles in here because the idea was maybe the thistles can deter the pigeons a bit, maybe hide the vetch from the view. And what I mean is if we just take a look here, I will show just you. Here is, is quite a, a weedy patch, but what we actually find is when we come down closer in amongst the weeds, we've got more successful vetch growing. Here's a very good one amongst here. And this one's getting away. And the same on the next row here. So where they're being shaded by, by the weeds, here's some quite successful vetch starting to grow now they are managing to actually grow so the pigeons aren't able to spot them and then again just here we're right in the the hedge bottom now uh, i probably got a little bit closer with the drill to the very edge but here's the vetch growing very very nicely but you can see the potential problem we've got here very thin stem and very weak you can see it's wanting to to lay over it is a climber you can see here how it likes to wrap itself on and climb up hence why we were trying to put the radish in to give it some strength to climb up but unfortunately the radishes have been taken by the pigeons and again here look it's all grown very very well so so although uh, there's, there's around half a hectare in here although the main crop in the main field looks like it is going to fail. I don't think it's going to make it, but we'll, we'll keep it going. What we have learned is by looking at the edges there, it does grow. 
if we can shade it from uh, from pests we can get it to grow so this sets us thinking how we can set this up for next year and the thought is to put a cover crop in in the late summer early autumn leave that cover crop to get quite thick and then in the spring we will drill into that cover crop leaving the cover crop as it is and then we, before the vetch potentially comes through or we might let the vetch come through because if we use a grass mix we can use a selective herbicide to take the grasses out and leave the vetches behind so we might try and drill them into the, the grasses which will then build a canopy for the vetch to grow up we'll destroy the grasses off leaving the vetch behind shaded from the pigeons and hopefully then we get a successful crop will it work we don't know we'll try it again in here and see how we get on but it, it is a learning process small area and we will see how we get on so i'll keep you updated on how this all does perform in the end and one thing i've just thought i'd quickly show you before we finish is is the other good benefit to a vetch so if we take a look at its roots so here here is one of the vetch plants which has been eaten by the pigeons you can see trying to regenerate here and send up new leaves but if we have a look below the soil surface and i can see how dry we've got in here this won't be helping neither we could do with a bit more rain um, the farmer's never happy last couple of months have been asking for it to stop raining and now i'm asking for a little bit more but here we can see on these roots the camera focus in these are the the nodules just in here little white lumps what these are doing is fixing nitrogen out of the atmosphere there's bacteria in there which converts that nitrogen out of the atmosphere into a form that this plant can actually feed on so this plant is feeding itself from the atmosphere the good thing is is once this plant gets harvested and taken away them nodules are still there they're no longer needed by the plant that all gets released back into the soil so it feeds the following plants which are coming along so it's we actually use vetches in our cover crop mixers because the roots are very good at, at, at exploring down into the soil and breaking it and structuring it for us you can see how that crumbles away just there but equally it leaves nitrogen behind to feed our next crops let's go and have a look at a bit of vetch which is growing more healthier and see what the roots look like so here we are we've come into the into the grass verge where we've got this much better growing vetches I just peel the spade back and then pull out let's have a look yeah now you can see here straight away much more vigorous rooting system let's shake all that off a lot more fibrous roots coming off these because they're intercepting a lot more sunlight but again you can see all the white nodules on them there's the actual vetch seed, what was planted. And then, yeah, all the nodules. So. Yes, we can grow vetch. We've just got to learn how to support it and keep all the hungry pigeons away from it. It's a very interesting. We'll keep trying at this and see if we can crack it. Well, like I say, we use vetch for cover crops and that's one thing I'm doing at the moment is planning our autumn cover crop mixers. We will put cover crops in front of our spring beans and in front of our spring oats. We might also do some in front of the sugar beet this year just to keep life into the soil, feeding the roots in, like I said, cycling the nutrition and it helps us not to have to cultivate because the roots will do it for us. So I'm busy at the moment just planning what species and varieties of all different types of cover crops to pop in the ground depending what we're trying to do so we'll be looking at structuring the soil we'll be looking at cycling nutrition we'll be looking at capturing nitrogen out of the atmosphere and we'll be looking at building a carbon source within the soil too and then on top of that some of them are grazed by sheep so we've got to factor in are they able to be firstly grazed by sheep and two are they going to do good for the sheep as well so when the when the shepherd brings the sheep on 
he wants to know he's going to be getting some goodness into his sheep as well so there's quite a lot of factors we have to take into account and i'll spend quite a lot of time just looking at first of all if i want to vetch it's not just grab a vetch seed we've got to decide what species of vetch so is it a common vetch this is common vetch what we're growing in here common purple spring um hairy there's all different types of vetches and some can't be really grazed by a sheep they all have different gross habits some don't really grow in the autumn they'll grow more in the spring some will be killed by the frost some have different root networks so all these things we have taken into account when we're looking so once i've decided on my mixes i think i'll um, do a short video for you just sort of describing what elements we brought together and exactly what we hope to get from them um, in the future so yeah so that's our update really for me i thought you'd find it interesting how these vetch trials getting on during june we've got an open day with agri during june we've got a technical farm open day where we'll probably have 40 to 50 farmers having a look around a lot of our trial sites so hopefully we'll get some video of that and hopefully we'll get some drone footage of all our different trials we've got around the farm just to show you what they look like so keep an eye out for that and we will see you in june thank you very much